go for a walk. Okay, well this is where we start. We put the uh, <clears throat> apples on this table and this kind of measures them. We shovel them in from the, uh, the 20 bushel bins and uh, this makes about one, uh, one rack when th this is full. <clears throat> this is the apple washer. It uh, has brushes in there and water runs in and goes through. The leaves and trash go down through. Any small apples end up on the bottom there. And then <coughs> comes on to the, into the, uh, the elevator and goes on up into the cider mill. And we got to go upstairs because this door, I think, is locked. Oh, it's open. This is the bottling area. We'll come back down here and uh, you can see what, uh, how we operate this. The apples come up that elevator, up into the crusher upstairs, and uh, if you want to go up there and take a look at it, you may. I'm uh, just about out of air from coming up the steps. <laughs> Who's Pardon? Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, the uh, <clears throat> apples, this is disconnected now, but the crushed apples come down through there and onto the table. <clears throat> this is what we do when we blow out a cloth, put a patch on it. And uh, almost all of them are patched at this time. We put these down to protect the surface of the table. That's a uh, white pine. It's fairly uh, soft material. And uh, if the rack has a, a, a staple or something, that's... Uh, Sticking down, it'll damage the finish. Now you made these racks yourself. Yeah. What woods are you using? This is made out of elm. Uh, supposedly, elm is somewhat flexible, mm -hmm. and so it gives it a, the ability to uh, flex with the load. Sometimes when the cheese isn't made up and each layer is nice and neat, uh, it gets pretty contorted. The, uh, it twists it out of shape and it uh, isn't good, so they have to be somewhat flexible. Uh, these I made, oh, I don't know, at least 10 years ago. and. Uh, we pressure wash them. The, a lot of times there'll be uh, <clears throat> pumice gets in between here, seeps through the uh, cloths, and you have to pressure wash both sides. And uh, then we sp spray them with Clorox water to uh, sanitize them. The inspector's starting to get noisy about putting. Uh, using wooden racks, they want plastic ones, which, uh, uh, as far as I know, wood doesn't absorb as much bacteria as they might think it does. Uh, I might as well ask, what metal did you use to 
put, build the racks and put them together that didn't break down from the side? Uh, stainless steel stainless staples, steel. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Watch your head behind you there. If you walk under okay. those levers, you, you banged already. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then this is the press. And uh, Boomer and Bosch at Press Company. Later on, it was uh, Dunning and Bosch. At they, uh, they made the same press. Uh, apparently, Boomer sold out to Dunning, and it was Dunning and Bosch. At but uh, the, uh, the belt and pulley system, uh, let's see, I think I can turn it on. I don't know what Andy's done here, but uh, we'll push the button if anything goes around or if not. You can see the, uh, the pulleys, it's driven by an electric motor upstairs, and uh, I gotta shut it off. It's One of the belts is crossed, and that operates the reverse. Uh, to raise the uh, the whole table when it's uh, done pressing. That is the the slowest speed that reversed it. it it's coming up very slowly now, but. It is up, and then that's going down at the slowest speed. The fastest speed is like that, and it's very noisy. So this is... Uh, this is an indicator of the pressure when that goes up. We try and keep it on these black marks. Uh, actually, it's bending this beam slightly, and that's what uh, causes this to go up through the fulcrum and lever. Uh, it's such a slight bend that you would never notice it, but it can be detected that way and uh, go on up, move the needle. The table is white pine and uh, we refinished it a couple of times, sanded it down and uh, now we uh, it's got a varnish finish of poly varnish on it. We had uh, previously used a, a fiberglass uh, like you'd use on a bolt haul, uh, and it uh, it would crack. Cider would get underneath it and uh, uh, pop it off, and it just it wasn't satisfactory. Then the cider goes down through either opening here. Uh, into the tank underneath. And from there, it goes over to the pump. And uh, up into this tank here, which has a, a bag filter on it. And uh, this is a holding tank for the uh, processor. Sound better? Uh, this processing system uh, was required by the state to 
if I was going to sell any wholesale cider and uh, it was necessary to get it uh, expensive, this little machine was $10,000. That's the processor. It's an ultraviolet device that uh, the cider goes through in a very thin layer, exposed to ultraviolet light, which kills the bacteria. It's particularly effective against uh, E. coli, and that's what uh, seems to bother the, the state inspectors. Uh, and uh, then it goes, is pumped by the machine up into a tank upstairs, which uh, is a refrigerated holding tank. And from there it goes downstairs to be bottled. Could you keep narrating? You can keep talking, but I'm going to go upstairs to look at the grinder. Okay. You, you don't need to go upstairs. Well, I think I've caught my breath now. I can. These are the claws we use. This, these are Dacron, and I believe these are nylon. And uh, they, uh, these Dacron ones clean up nice, <clears throat> but uh, they, they all work about the same. I had some thin nylon ones that were like this, and uh, they ended up uh, blowing out after a few years of use. This uh, goes down on top of the rack, the wooden rack on the table. The cloth goes over this and then this area is filled in with the, the ground pumice. And <clears throat> Uh, the claws are folded back over and uh, that's uh, when they're ready to press. Uh, then another rack can be put on and the process repeated a number of times. We have uh, capability of 10 racks. That's about up here and uh, it's quite a job to get that last one on there without um, there's five bushels of apples uh, <clears throat> and a bushel of apples is about 40 pounds so uh, that's uh, 200 pounds I believe the uh, apples come down and the shoot through the shoot and are we don't have to handle them, but we have to smooth it out and, and cover the rack. But just working at that height is kind of difficult. I went to uh, Cornell University a couple times for uh, cider uh, school. It was uh, mainly a a safety thing and uh, as far as food safety so that we uh, have some uh, idea. It was a short course, a matter of a few days, but uh, there was quite a few professors telling us about food safety. We're upstairs now, where the apples come up this uh, elevator, and uh, we have the uh, shrouds off the grinder, but uh, <clears throat> this is where the apples get ground up. They come out looking a lot like applesauce. <clears throat>
the uh, <coughs> belts and pulleys are uh, <coughs> uh, set up so that we can operate everything from downstairs. The elevator can be shut off and uh, started from down there as well as the grinder. You saw and heard the uh, machine running. It gets pretty loud in here when we're operating the grinder. Actually adds a little noise to it yet, but uh, <clears throat> we can be pressing uh, a batch of cider for one operation and uh, it will uh, uh, then we can be working on setting up the next uh, racks to do the next batch. The cider comes up into this refrigerated tank and uh, then is uh, flows by gravity downstairs to the, uh, the bottling area. The, the electric motor is over there and uh, through a system of belts we can reduce or increase the speed by the size of the pulleys. <clears throat> the uh, grinder runs at a, about 2,500 RPM, and the uh, the press wheels are about 1,200. So, uh, as you increase the size of the driving pulley and onto the uh, driven pulley, you increase the speed and. A small pulley to a large one decreases the speed. Our spare parts are up here. Uh, some are useful and some not useful, but uh, <laughs> they're here. <laughs> Who's to say? Yeah. Anything else here? This cart is, holds the bottles while we're getting ready to uh, tap the cider. Comes down the pipe and we have a filter there. It's a screen filter. <clears throat> Keeps any foreign material that might accumulate. And then uh, out the door it goes. Well, thank you for the tour. So that's about it. It's more fun when it's running.
but uh, it gets fun. Starting is a little bit of a chore, and then you get to it. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> there's been some work done in here to tighten up the the holes in the wall and stuff. It's, it's worth noting built this building, so I'm looking at the foundation is every bit as beautiful as the press, because I'm looking at the size of some of the river rock that, you know, the that you fit in there. Yeah. And it's holding it all up. We, a uh, labor of love, eh? We have people come in, they wonder how old the foundation is. Well, it was built in 1980. <laughs> it's not particularly old. But it will probably be there in 2080. I would think so, yeah. That's, that's got to be some satisfaction in that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we enjoyed building. Uh, and uh, it was quite a process to get everything fitted up. Once we got all the pieces in place, we turned it on and it ran, uh, which was uh, without any adjusting or thing. We did adjust some things later as we found we needed to but uh, for the most part it just uh, turned it on and it ran and everything was good did you say whoopee yeah kind of <laughs> when i did the grist mill down there it was the same thing we got it going we turned it on the big stone 1500 pound stone went around just like it's supposed to so yeah Let me ask you about the grist mill. Um, how much grain do they run through it now? Do they do, they do a batch periodically? Every uh, uh, third Sunday through the summer we, okay. we are there. We don't always run it, but quite often we will, especially if there's some people there. When I lived in Illinois, there was an old grist mill. It was actually still water driven. Mm -hmm. It was in this original location. And they would have stone ground corn for sale for whatever you wanted to do with it but it was it was a place it was a destination yeah and a lot of people showed up because they wanted to cook with that mm -hmm. we do make uh meal but we uh are applying for a 20c license now so that we can sell it legally uh, we have been selling it but not you know okay. not supposed to you accepted donations sure that's right. I'm definitely going to turn this 